Paso Park in Barry, Illinois, is the site for this, the seventh annual Masters International Shooting Championship. Shooters from around the world are here to grab for shooting's ultimate trophy and over a quarter of a million dollars in prize money. Located near the banks of the mighty Mississippi, Paso Park is undeniably one of the finest shooting facilities in the U.S. And it's in this ideal setting that the best handgun shooter in the world will be crowned. The Masters is a three-day match with three events that are as different as they are challenging. The big guns at the Masters are used for the long range, an event that tests a shooter's ability to hit targets at distances from 75 to 200 meters. In contrast, the precision event uses 22 caliber pistols, but this event requires a steady hand and nerves of steel. Shooters have to hit small targets at up to 50 meters under the pressure of a time limit. It's based on NRA bullseye shooting and has toppled many of the top guns in the world as they pursue the shooting sport's ultimate crown. The action event is a battle with a clock and 45 steel plates. The best at this game can do it in the 23 second range. That's close to a half second per target. When the speedsters cut loose on action, it's something to see and definitely the crowd favorite every year at the Masters. We'll begin with day one on the long range in just a moment. Shooting Sports USA's special presentation of the 7th Annual Masters International Shooting Championship is brought to you by the National Rifle Association of America, defending your Second Amendment Masters champion and Ipsic world champion. Rob Latham, winner of more championships than any action shooter in history. Springfield's two-time Grandmaster and four-time civilian bullseye champion, Alan Fulford, or past master and all-around shooting great, Ken Tapp. They'll tell you that winners pick the Springfields that fit their style of shooting. World-class firearms from Springfield Armory. They're the winner's choice. Colt, a proud tradition for over a century and a half. Designing and manufacturing firearms to state-of-the-art specifications today. Colt, the legend lives. When you can no longer own a handgun for personal protection. Or any handgun for anything, you'll say, where was the NRA? No, I'll say, where were you? I'm Wayne LaPierre. Honest American gun owners like you and me now face serious threats to our freedom. When you get arrested for not registering your semi-automatic rifle or shotgun, and it's happening now, you'll say, where was the NRA? And I'll say, where were you? If you own a firearm, any firearm, call now to join the NRA. Use your Visa, MasterCard, or we'll bill you later. For $25, you get a year of great NRA magazines and member benefits and you'll be where all responsible gun owners need to be now, in the NRA. When good American gun owners do nothing, those gun rights are gone forever. Historians will wonder, where was the NRA? And your children will ask, where were you? Where were you? Where were you? So come on. Call now. You don't have to miss any of the excitement of the 1992 Masters International Shooting Championship with this limited edition video. You'll enjoy expanded coverage of the competition, including the popular High 16 shoot-off. To get your copy, send check or money order for $24.95 plus $3 shipping and handling to Shooting Productions, P.O. Box 59861, Dayton, Ohio, 45459. Or call 1-800-826-8703 and have your Visa or MasterCard ready. This incredible video is not available in stores. Order today. Park in Western Illinois, site of the 7th Annual Masters International Shooting Championship. I'm Rick Thurtle, your host for the next half hour. In that time, we'll show you some of the fastest and most accurate pistol shooters in the world. With more than a quarter of a million dollars in prize money, this is the premier shooting event on the planet. And in its seventh year, this year's shoot was as exciting as any of the ones preceding it. The homecoming to pass the park was the sweetest for Doug Koenig, the youngest professional shooter on the circuit. The 23-year-old rolled into town as the defending Masters champ and two-time Bianchi Cup champion. Painting is the favorite to become the first shooter to ever successfully defend his Masters crown. Only one man has won the match twice, and that is soft-spoken Georgian Alan Fulford. It's going to be a horse race. Um, there's probably 10 or 12 guys that could win it. Fulford is also among the favorites to win the match. 
So is Rob Latham, one of the first full-time professional shooters. Latham has won virtually every major action or speed shooting championship in the world, but he has never won the Masters. Neither has J. Michael Plasco. He finished among the leaders in 1991, but has never returned home to Little Rock with shooting's biggest trophy. They rotate the order of events on a three-year cycle, and the last time they shot them in this order, Brian Enos won it all in 1989. A veteran of more than a decade on the pro circuit, Enos let the word out when he hit past the park that he's retiring from the sport when the seventh Masters International Shooting Championship is in the books. I try to just pay attention to what I'm doing, right, when I'm doing it. I'm trying to, uh, you know, look too far in the future or the past or think about what's going to happen or what did happen or just try and pay attention right then. So there you have it, a little drama and a wide open field heading into day one of the match. Lou M takes us through day one for the Super Squad on the long range. Thanks, Rick. Like all three events at the Masters, the long range has 45 targets to be knocked down at distances of up to 200 meters. The course record on the long range is 41 going into this year's shoot. Master class shooters, known informally as the Super Squad, are grouped to shoot together for each day of the match. Bob Latham was in the first group of Super Squad shooters to hit the long range. He would have liked to be in the mid-30s on day one, but ended up back in the pack with a round of 29. Alan Fulford was next down the course of fire. Usually sure-handed at this event, Fulford could manage to hit just 30 of the steel plate. Tomorrow's precision event is Fulford's specialty, but he could have used a better showing today on the long range to give him an edge going into the rest of the match. Brian Enos shot a 38 on the long range when he won the Masters back in 1989. Some changes in the event have made it tougher in 1992. Enos came through the long range with a score of 34, putting him among the overall leaders and in a position to make a move on day two of the match. I think the year I won, I just shot a fairly solid score on the long range. It wasn't anything outstanding. I like to get started on the long range. To me, that's the most consistently easy event for me. I could get in a good solid score there, and, and I'd much rather finish on the action than, say, the precision. Ken Tapp was the master in 1988, and is a terrific all-around shooter. He matched Enos today with a score of 34. Tapp had the match wrapped up last year before blowing out of the long range on the final day, but this year he was where he wanted to be after day one. J. Michael Plaxco helped set the course record with a 41 a year ago, but he stumbled with a round of 30 this year. Plaxco hopes to make up ground later in the week to have a shot at winning this match he has long coveted. A speed shooting specialist who won the Masters in 1991, Doug Koenig was right in the thick of things with a score of 33. It isn't good as he would have liked, but he has escaped day one bunched up with a large number of shooters with scores in the mid 30s. We all shot about the same. There's a couple high scores, but we're all 32, 33, 35 in that area. When all was said and done, three men tied for the top score at the long range with matching scores of 38. They were John Pride, one of the top law enforcement shooters on the circuit, Frank Glenn, a retired police officer from Arizona, and William Abbott. Scoring at the Masters is done by combining a shooter's score from all three events with the top score being the gauge for all the rest. An example, on the long range of precision events, if Butch had the best score of all shooters with a 30, he would receive 100 points. If Sundance hit 25 targets, he would receive a score of 83. On the action event, if Butch shot the 45 targets in a time of 23 seconds, and that was the fastest time of all shooters, he would receive 100 points. If Sundance shot action in 27 seconds, he would receive 85 points. Add up the scores from all three events, and the shooter with the best aggregate score is the master. A couple of months before the actual shooting of the Masters, they have a dress rehearsal, and there was some shocking developments at this year's dress rehearsal. Judy Woolley, a woman, came on to win with the best score in the dress rehearsal. I can't go anywhere, and I don't resent it. Um, but I can't walk 15 feet without stopping to talk to somebody. So there's almost no time that I can have by myself in a match, which I used to have plenty of. You know, I was just, pod you know, somebody from Podunk, Montana. And Unlike other sports, men and women compete against each other in action shooting. When she beats some of the top shooters in this year's dress rehearsal, a rumble could be heard throughout the industry. What would it be like if a woman could break on through and win the Masters? 
dress rehearsal was easy because I never thought I'd win it. I didn't anticipate it. It's kind of just summed up that way. And now the hump is going to be uh, getting through, surviving this match because I've put a lot of pressure on myself and other people have too. That pressure affected Wooly at this year's match, but she still pulled together to put up the top lady score for the second year in a row. Overall, she finished in 24th place in the standings, the second best of all sportsman class shooters. A year's experience of dealing with the pressure of the Masters will only make her better as she tries to prove that for women, there truly is a home on the range. There's something for everyone at the Masters, and that includes something special for the kids. The Bicathlon. It's just one example of the family-like atmosphere at the Masters. The Bicathlon is based on the Olympic Biathlon that combines cross-country skiing and marksmanship. Any boy or girl under the age of 16 can enter. They race around a one-third mile track on bicycles and then have to hit a series of targets with air pistols. The competition gets better each year. And there are no real losers at the Bicathlon. Everyone is guaranteed a good time. We'll be right back with a record-breaking day on the Precision event. Stay with us. Challenging. Fast pace. Performance pushed to the limit. That's competitive shooting. And Smith & Wesson is a dynamic part of this fast-growing sport. With Team Smith & Wesson, the new Performance Center, Active Shooting Sports Sponsorship, and products that'll perform to any challenge. There's a movement in this country to surrender the Second Amendment. Listen to this. There is no reason for anyone in this country, anyone except a police officer or a military person, to buy, to own, to have, to use a handgun. Still quote. The only way to do that is to change the Constitution. That's not some nobody. That's the president of NBC News. You see, it's, it's a national media movement to repeal your constitutional right to keep and bear arms. And you can help stop it by joining the NRA. For just $25, you'll get a year of great magazines and member benefits. And you'll be where all honest gun owners belong, in the NRA. If you want to keep the rights your founding fathers entrusted to you... The rights the Constitution guarantees to you. The rights the NRA protects for you. Oh, no. You don't have to miss any of the excitement of the 1992 Masters International Shooting Championship with this limited edition video. You'll enjoy expanded coverage of the competition, its surrounding events, and never-before-seen insights into this world-class championship. As an added bonus, you'll see the High 16 Shoot-Off, 16 of the world's top shooters battling it out in a dynamic one-on-one -on -one contest. To get your copy, send check or money order for $24.95 plus $3 shipping and handling to Shooting Productions. P.O. Box 59861, Dayton, Ohio, 45459. Or call 1-800-826-8703 and have your Visa or MasterCard ready. This incredible video is only available through this special TV offer. You won't find anything like it anywhere else. Order today. Welcome back. The Precision event has done more to decide the Masters Championship than any other. Using 22 caliber pistols, the Bullseye Specialists have to build some momentum going into the action event, while the Speedsters hope to stay close to the top, hoping to have some margin of error going into their specialty on the final day of the match. The Precision event is based on NRA Bullseye shooting and requires shooters to fire at targets from 25 to 50 meters away, some of which are about the size of a silver dollar. Rob Latham seems to always have problems on this event, and 1992 was no exception. One of the best speed shooters to ever strap on a holster, Latham saw his chance of winning the match evaporate with a score of just 21 of a possible 45 targets. J. Michael Plaxco also ran into trouble on the precision range. He was one back of Latham with a score of 20. Breaking through on the precision range helped Brian Enos win the match in 1989. 
This year, he'll have to settle for a respectable round of 25. He would have liked to have been closer to the 30 mark, but he's still very much in the running for first place after his first two events. You know, talked about tomorrow, he said it's going to be your last two. Yeah, it's going to be. Yeah, I'm just going to get everything I got there. Try and stay tough, see what happens. Defending champ Doug Koenig blew through the precision range with 30 hits. This puts him in position to be the first man ever to win the match in consecutive years. A master on the action event, Koenig is right where he wants to be going into the final day of shooting. So is John Pride. Not known as an outstanding action man, Pride scored the fourth best overall on precision. Combine that with his top score on the long range, and Pride is having his best year ever at the Masters. Funny, my philosophy is, well, I'll go out and have a good time and try my best, and, and my best happen. I couldn't believe it. It's, it's, uh, so yesterday, shooting a 38 long range, it really surprised me. I, I knew I was capable of it, but everything came together. I missed five in the first bank and then went on to almost clean the rest of the match. But then again, it's my philosophy, and don't ever give up. Keep hammering away, hammering away. Far and away, the show stealer on day two is Alan Fulford. He knew he needed to pile up some points to have any chance of winning the match, so he piled up the points and then some. Fulford is the only man to win the Masters twice, and today he walked away from the precision event with a second accomplishment, a new event record. He hit an incredible 33 of the 45 targets. That may be pretty close for what's possible for me. It's, it's, it equals what I've shot in practice. I've never, never shot a 33 before in uh i never beat a 33 in uh, in practice so uh unless i change equipment i'm not sure i can get much better than that this event has set the stage for the final day of the match and there is still no clear-cut leader a lot of people will be thinking tonight there'll be a lot of things will be turning in their heads so uh it'll be an exciting day tomorrow when we talk about the best in the world coming to the Masters, we mean the best. Meet United States Olympic team member, Captain John McNally. John flew all night from the Summer Games in Barcelona just to be at this year's Masters. A 36-year-old from Columbus, Georgia, McNally was participating in his third Olympics. Do the best you can and hopefully bring a medal back for, for America. It's, it's not just for yourself, you know. It's, you got, it's for the country. It's special. McNally finished fifth in the international rapid-fire event in Barcelona. That's his best finish ever. He follows in his father's footsteps, who also competed in the Summer Games in 1968 and 72. McNally won the precision event at the Masters in 1989, carving his place in the history of this event. He's one of the best at a game dominated by shooters in Eastern Europe. His goal now is to get himself and the American team to the level that they can be a factor in the Summer Games of 1996 in Atlanta. That's in his home state of Georgia. International shooting is just not that, you know, that popular here in America. I know we have the talent to be, to be the, the best in the world. This is the seventh year the Masters has crowned the best handgun shooter in the world. Soon the competition will expand to include shotgun events and long gun events. The goal of the Masters program from the beginning has been to create an event which would be a true Olympics of shooting. By that, we mean to have competition events in rifle, in shotgun, and in handgun that embrace all the different disciplines of the shooting sports for all three of those different types of firearms. This year is a significant transitional year for the Masters because we have completed the rifle leg of the Masters tripod. We now have three events in place for the rifle competition, a rimfire event, an action event, and a long-range event. Next year, we will make the Rifle Masters official, and it will be an additional Masters competition, if you will, independent, co-equal, with separate sponsorship, just like the Handgun Masters. Coming up on Shooting Sports USA, we'll have the blistering speed of the action event. You don't have to miss any of the excitement of the 1992 Masters International Shooting Championship with this limited edition video. You'll enjoy expanded coverage of the competition, including the popular High 16 shoot-off. To get your copy, send check or money order for $24.95 plus $3 shipping and handling to Shooting Productions, P.O. Box 59861, Dayton, Ohio, 45459. Or call 1-800-826-8703. Have your Visa or MasterCard ready. 
This incredible video is not available in stores. Order today. Which firearms do the winners choose? Ask Team Springfield's Doug Koenig, 91 Masters Champion and Ipsic World Champion. Rob Latham, winner of more championships than any action shooter in history. Springfield's two-time Grandmaster and four-time Civilian Bullseye Champion, Alan Fulford. Or past master and all-around shooting great, Ken Tapp. They'll tell you that winners pick the Springfields that fit their style of shooting. World-class firearms from Springfield Armory. They're the winner's choice. Welcome back. On day three of the Masters, the Super Squad faces the action event. Here they must knock down nine sets of five targets each and do so with lightning speed. The lowest total time on the event, with penalties given for missed targets, is making for some interesting strategies going into the event that will decide the match. I practice a little bit, and I know what I can do there, and that action event can eat you up if you start, you know, if you start trying to get too tricky. So, uh, you know, I'm just going to shoot through and be as smooth as possible, and for me, that'll be the fastest I can go. I'm going to try to shoot what I'm capable of. To try to go faster than you are capable will result in disaster. Anything could happen. Like I said, we've seen huge leads, you know, be cut down, and guys that weren't really in position shoot a real good last day score on whatever event it would be and, and be right up there. One by one, the Super Squad has to make their way down the three stages of the action event and contend with the ever-increasing rain. Rob Latham was the first up. Latham was a crowd favorite to win the speed shooting event and made it through in a little more than 26 seconds. Good for fifth place on action. Alan Fulford was next. He'd later joke about the older shooters keeping the heat on the youngsters. He's been working on his speed shooting and did a fine job today but a 34-second run was not good enough. He'd settle for a fifth-place finish in the overall standings and have to wait until next year to wrap up his third Masters title. Brian Enos is as fast as any shooter in the world, but he picked up some penalty points along the way. Capable of being in the low 20s, Enos finished above the 30-second mark, which sent him back to Arizona without a second Masters crown. John Pride took a steady ride through action. He knew he was in position to win the biggest prize of his shooting career. He shot the event in less than 32 seconds and finished in third place overall for the match. Doug Koenig finished his round with one of the better scores of the day, 27.27 seconds. But some trouble on the first two days left him with the second overall second place finish in the last three years. I had a little trouble on some equipment and stuff before, right before the match. I had to make some quick last-minute changes on long range and stuff, and uh, I guess I didn't hang tough enough. Uh, I let some of it distract me as I was shooting and uh, gave up on a couple shots. Um, and action, I guess under the conditions, uh, I didn't do too bad, but I wasn't happy with how I shot out there either. Koenig's nemesis on action was Jerry Barnhart. Barnhart made his way to Paso Park on a mission, win the action event, and do so in impressive style. Well, he didn't let himself or the crowd down. Barnhart blistered the course in less than 23 seconds. He 
He won the action event by hitting every one of the 45 targets in close to one half second each. I think overall this week, I played my mental game out pretty good. A lot of people said the action would get slower, and I, I told them I, I think it would stay the same. If, if any, it might get a second slower. While the super squad was shooting action, Frank Glenn, a retired policeman from Scottsdale, Arizona, was on the precision event, putting together an outstanding round of 32. He matched the top score on long range with a 38 and did well on action. Glenn soared out of the pack to win the 1992 Masters by the narrowest margin in the history of the match. It's got to be the biggest moment in your career and not a bad <laughs> paycheck. Yes, it is. It's, it's great and it's... Uh something that I, I wanted to happen, but I, I didn't really think it was going to because I'd put so much effort into other different shooting programs in the past, and, and I always just got close, but I never quite made it. I mean, as close as it was, me and him was 1,700th of a percentage point or something silly like that. I mean, it's, it's actually ridiculously close comparing all the different, you know, matches and stuff that you shoot. It's unbelievable. You know, they're so different in their own way, and to be that close at the end is unbelievable. Congratulations to Frank Glenn, the 1992 Master. I'm Lou M., and on behalf of Rick Thirtle and myself, we hope to see you next year for the 1993 Masters International in American Firearms. Smith & Wesson, quality firearms since 1852. Colt, the legend lives. B Square, competition tough. MTM Case Guard, ammo case and reloading accessories for today's shooter. And Wamco Products, the solutions company, solving everyday shooter problems.